tatu samee kidogo kwa tekniko ya sauti mafundi wetu wanashughulikia baada ya dakika chache tutaweza kusikia kile kinachozungumziwa Mungu awabariki I think um, if we are having a bit of a technical problem, we can always share um, the video later. So I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Mrs. Dolores Thomas, who is the Vice President of the Joseph Business School based in Illinois, Chicago. Welcome, Dolores. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Oh, good. So do I need an interpreter? I do? Who doesn't speak English? No comprende English. Okay, thanks, it's yours. Okay, great. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm asked to talk a little bit about uh, the Joseph Business School. But for me to do so, I need to talk to you about the founder and visionary of JBS. Uh, there was a time, if you know, in biblical times when Moses was called to lead the children of Israel out of bondage. But he never made it there. In fact, God told him that he had to commission Joshua to lead. Na ukweli wa swala hilo ni kuwa Mungu alimwambia ampe jukumu hilo Yoshua ili aweze yeye kukamilisha. And the Lord told uh, Joshua be strong and very courageous. Na Bwana akamwambia Yoshua uwe na nguvu na uwe hodari. And he says the people will follow you as you follow Christ. Na akamwambia watu watamfuata kama unavyomfuata Kristo. I chose to follow Dr. Winston because I saw the evidence of him following Christ. Mimi nilichagua kumfuata Dr. Winston kwa sababu niliona uthibitisho wa yeye wa kumfuata Kristo. And I'll tell you what the Joseph Business School is all about. Nami nitawaelezea kuhusu shule hii ya biashara ya Joseph inahusu nini? Uh Dr. Winston got this vision that it's time for the body of Christ to rise up and take possession of what God plans for their lives. And you cannot do that with natural knowledge. You need supernatural knowledge. And so when I first joined his church there were things that I saw where I was just amazed by the supernatural move of God. Kwa mara ya kwanza nilipojiunga kwenye kanisa lake kuna vitu ambavyo niliviona ambavyo nilishangazwa sana jinsi Mungu alivyokuwa akitembea kwa nguvu zake. This only happens in the movies except I got to experience it in real life. Na haya yanatokea tu kwenye sinema isipokuwa tu kwamba niliweza sasa kuyaona katika maisha halisi. This man pointed at a building, a mall, 33 acres, 500,000 square feet, and with faith bought that mall. Mtu huyu alielekeza kwenye kiwanja ambacho kilikuwa na jengo kubwa la maduka mbalimbali, ambalo lilikuwa ni kubwa sana na kwa imani akaweza kulinunua jengo hilo na hilo eneo. He didn't have a 100 page uh, strategic plan. He had one scripture from God. Wala hakuwa na kurasa moja za mpango mkakati, bali alikuwa na andiko moja tu kutoka kwa Mungu. And it was in Joshua that every place the sole of his feet shall tread upon that has he given unto him. Na andiko hilo litoa katika Yeshua ya kwamba popote pale ambapo miguu yenu itakanyaga Mungu amewapa eneo hilo. Then I was attending a conference and one of the speakers were unable to make it because there was a storm. Uh, coming. And I saw his wife get up and his wife would pray a prayer for the storm to be still so that the airways would open up and the speaker would be able to make it. And sure enough I said what manner of man is this? Na hakika nikasema huyu ni mtu aina gani? 
So he asked my husband and I to start the school. Kwa hiyo akatuomba mimi pamoja na mume wangu tuweze kuanzisha shule hii. Because he had preached about uh, getting your inheritance. Kwa sababu alikuwa ameuhubiri kuhusu kupata urithi wako. He had preached about the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Alihubiri kuhusu utajiri wa waovu uko kwa ajili ya wenye haki. But now it was time to move from preaching to actually manifesting that wealth. Lakini sasa ilikuwa ni wakati wa kuhama kutoka kwenye mahubiri kwenda kufanya madhihirisho. And so he asked us to start this business school. Kwa hiyo akatuomba tuanze tuanzishe shule hii ya biashara. So I saw from a distance how his faith worked. Kwa hiyo niliona kutokea mbali jinsi ambavyo imani yake ilifanya kazi. But I had no idea he was going to ask me to use my faith. Lakini wala sikuwa na wazo lolote kwamba angeniambia mimi nitumie imani yangu. So I used we used our natural knowledge to come up with a strategic plan as to how to start the school he asked. Kwa tukatumia maarifa yetu ya kiasili tuliyopata mashuleni jinsi ya kutengeneza mipango mikakati ili tuweze kufikia lengo. And so you know you do what you normally do when you're a professional. Kwa hiyo unajua unafanya kwa mtu wa taaluma. You do your research, you do your benchmarking and you come back with a recommendation hizo na unakuja unatoa maoni yako ya jinsi ya kufanya hiyo kazi. The recommendation basically said I've scoped out the land and I've seen what the world does and if we wanted to do something similar this is what it looks like. Maoni tu ni kwamba ndio nimeshaangalia nimeona jinsi vitu vinavyofanyika na sisi tunaweza tukafanya hivi. Aizo kwa na chuo cha miaka miwili. to gather and therefore it will take somewhere between 18 program started. So, this always worked when I was in corporate. Sasa hili mara zote nilifanya kazi nilipokuwa nafanya kazi kwenye mashirika mengine mbalimbali ambayo sio ya kidini. I never had a plan that was rejected. Sikwai kuwa na mpango wote nilioandaa ambao ulishawahi kukataliwa. And I never heard someone use the word that's not anointed. Na sijawahi kumsikia mtu yoyote akitumia neno kwamba hicho ulichokifanya hakina upako. It was a foreign language and a new vocabulary. Kwangu mimi ilikuwa ni lugha ya kigeni na haya ilikuwa ni maneno mapya kabisa kuyasikia. Now normally you think wisdom comes from those who have experience. Na mara nyingi unafikiria ya kwamba hekima huja kutoka kwa wale ambao wana uzoefu. He was a preacher. Alikuwa ni mhubiri. at a school wala hakuna hata mmoja wetu ambaye alishawahi kuanzisha shule but this is what he said let me go home and i'll pray about it and see whether or not that's what the lord says as to how to start he came back and the lord said it will take you two months to start the school akarudi akaniambia bwana anasema shule my flesh was a little insulted ah mwili wangu kidogo ulijisikia vibaya nikasikia hata ufahamu wangu kiakili kidogo umetiwa changamoto but i had just started to become a student of faith lakini ndio ilikuwa safari yangu ya kuanza kuwa mwanafunzi wa imani and the first lesson is that obedience is greater than sacrifice na somo la kwanza ilikuwa utii ni bora kuliko dhabihu so without checking with my intellect i simply obeyed him because i knew nothing else. Kwa hiyo bila kuanza kufikiria kiakili, kirahisi tu nikamtii kwa sababu sikujua kingine chochote. Within two months we saw Jericho fall down. Katika miezi miwili tukaona Yeriko ikianguka. Within two months we saw the Red Sea part. Katika miezi miwili tukaona bahari ya Shamu ikigawanyika. And we manifested some of the world's most premier and renowned instructors. Na tukaweza pia kuwapata baadhi ya walimu wazuri sana katika ulimwengu. An innovative curriculum. Pamoja tukawa na mtaalamu mzuri wa kiubunifu. And a school that started in two months. Na shule ambayo ilianza katika miezi miwili. So the Joseph Business School. Kwa hiyo shule hii ya Yusuf carries in its DNA inabeba nasaba zake the anointing of god upako wa mungu the faith of god imani ya mungu and the supernatural manifestation of god na nguvu ya kimungu ya madhihirisho so although we might teach uh, practical skills of business ingawa ndio tunaweza tukafundisha mbinu mbali mbali za kiutendaji of doing business ya kwamba iko njia ya kufanya biashara kwa jinsi ya kimungu 
time of famine you shall be satisfied. Ambayo katika wakati wa njaa hakika when you might not have shillings pale ambapo huna hata shilingi god will give you doors of favor that shillings cannot buy mungu atakupa milango ya upendeleo god will anoint you with the level of skill all men workmanship to give you the skill that you need to do what only god can do mungu atakupa upako na uwezo wa kuweza kufanya vitu ambavyo utaweza kuvifanya so this business school is not your typical business school. So if you're looking to be an academician, if you're simply looking to get a or e paper, This is not the school for you. Basi naomba nikwambie kwamba hii shule sio kwa ajili yako. But lakini if you are like Mary, lakini wewe kama ni uko kama Mariamu, and the Lord says that he's calling you, Bwana anasema ya kwamba anakuita wewe to give birth to a vision that only God can do. Maono ambayo ni Mungu pekee yake. He's going to be to say be it unto me according to your word. But If you're willing to have a dream like Joseph, then this is the school for you. Basi shule hii ni kwa ajili yako. We will create an environment tutatengeneza mazingira that the anointing of God ambayo kupitia mazingira haya will bring forth the vision of God. And so if you're called to be an entrepreneur, kwa hiyo kama umeitwa kuitwa and you no longer want to do it the world's way na hutaki tena kufanya kama mwingine na kufaa wewe so i'll give you a few that we have had students tumeshakuwa what we call in the united states is that they were on government aid ambao kule marekani tunawaita ni wanakuwa katika msaada wa serikali i like what um Dr. Uh, Obi said she said it was a generation of poverty it's a dynasty of poverty uh, This has been multiple generations of poverty that they were on public aid As we nurtured and acted as midwives for these visions to be birth tunapoendelea kuwalea na kuwakuza wakunga hawa ili waweze kusaidia kuzaliwa kwa maono haya We have testimonies of people who've gone from welfare to multimillionaires Tunao watu ambao wana shuhuda wametoka kutoka utajiri wa kawaida kuwa utajiri uliobobea wa kutupwa USD 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 Yeah United States dollar USD au United States dollar fedha ya dolari Um And so, and so it's important we've also had people who bought businesses by faith. Lakini pia tumekuwa na watu ambao wamenunua biashara kwa Jesus said that the vision of the instructors is to teach students to create multi-million dollar businesses. Maono ya waalimu ni kuwa kuweza kubwa sana ndani ya miaka mitatu. God. Yani Mungu mkuu. And if we're heirs of God, to reflect the bigness of God. Basi lazima tuonyeshe ukuu wa Mungu. So technically the class the classes offer over 30 plus courses. Uh, ki utendaji madarasa haya yanatoa kama takriban kozi 30. We do pray. Tunaomba. We do worship. Tunaabudu. But that is not what we do over the nine months. Lakini hicho sio tu kitu pekee tunachokifanya katika miezi hiyo tisa. Do not be fooled it is not church. Sasa usidanganyike kwamba hili sio kanisa. You will have to research. Itabidi mfanye eh, tafiti mbalimbali. Mbali. You will have to do pricing analysis. Lazima mfanye tena tasisi, eh, tafiti nyingine za kina kwa habari ya vitu mbalimbali mtakavyokuwa mkijifunza. You have to understand how the stock market works. Lazima muelewe jinsi soko la kibiashara linavyofanya kazi. It is to build character and competence. Ni kujenga tabia pia na uwezo wa ushindani. So if you are ready, 
Kama uko tayari, to go to Canaan. Kwenda Canaan. And if you want to be among those who says we're well able, let us go up at once. Na kama kati ya wale ambao wanasema sisi tunaweza kabisa forward to seeing you this year at JBS. Basi tunatarajia sana kukuona wewe katika kwenye shule hii Mungu akubariki. Oh, I'll just also say if you want to learn more right now, um, we do have a website you could visit at www.jbs.edu. Ah, uh, hiyo tovuti aliyoitaja kama unataka kujifunza zaidi basi utatembelea tovuti hiyo. Thank you very much. This is Dolores. I hope you're all excited and looking forward to the beginning and the commencement of the Joseph Business School here in Tanzania. The Joseph Business School actually has 12 affiliate campuses across the United States and internationally. Okay, I said um, the Joseph Business School has 12 affiliate campuses across the US. Ah, uh, hiki kina vyuo vingine shirikishi kama 12 katika uh, Marekani. It's in London, England. Pamoja na maeneo mengine kama uh, Uingereza, Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, Johannesburg, Africa Kusini. Brazil, India. Brazil, India. Belgium and Dubai. Ubelgiji, Dubai. And now Tanzania. Sasa Tanzania. So we thank God for the favor that he's given us. Kwa hiyo hii ni upendeleo ambao tumepewa sisi. And as um, Dolores said, if you want more information, you can currently go on to the US website, but also if you want to sign up as a prospective student. Lakini kama Dolores alivyosema, kama unataka kupata taarifa zaidi, unaweza kutembelea tovuti ile ya Marekani na uhusiana na shule hii, lakini pia kama unataka kujiandikisha moja kwa moja kwenye mtandao kama mwanafunzi mtarajiwa please um, when you step outside later please write your name at the usher's desk outside and we will contact you in due time tafadhali sana unapotoka au tunapomaliza baadaye utakapotoka nje pale andikisha jina lako na wahudumu watachukua jina lako na taarifa zako baadaye tutawasiliana na wewe so just before we move into the panel session is the video ready kabla hatujaingia kwenye kipindi kingine ambacho tutakuwa tukizungumza pamoja na wanenaji je ile video iko tayari
there is no much attention and focus on, the, on, on how to take it straight out there. Many times you can focus on the leaders to the, to the, to the state leaders, government leaders, and the political and political leaders, but the private sector and its actors in uh, the, the great group of leaders who can show value to the people here. Our uh, mission is to equip, train, and commission leaders for ethical and environmental leadership across the continent. Because that is really what is missing in this continent as far as the leadership is concerned. So I think as a chief to connect people to people in these two countries, business to businesses, now government and the other government, into towards economic business. The first is training. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now going to go into a business and entrepreneurship panel session that will give us an opportunity to hear from priests who have been kings, like Dr. Bill Winston, who will share his experiences, his wisdom, his knowledge, that will enable us to unlock our finances, our businesses, our nations, our communities, and our cities. Mabibi na mabwana, tunaingia kwenye kipindi cha maswali na majibu, kutakuwa na meza ambayo wataka watumishu wa mongu, ambao wametumika katika jamii, lakini pia kanisani, na wataenda kutupa na mna mbali mbali ya jinsi mungu alivyo wainua wao, na sisi tupate hizo idea zitu saidia na sisi kutoka we'll get to hear from kings like Dr. Obi Ezekwesili tutasikia kutoka kwa uh, Dr. Obi Ezekwesili who've had great experience in the corporate world in the marketplace but are also powerful servants of God uh, ambaye ametumika sana katika eneo la biashara uh, 
same ama eneo la soko amefanya kazi kwa katika nafasi mbalimbali mbali za kiuongozi and is an advocate for governance and integrity ambaye yeye ni mmoja wa watu ambao wanasimamia mambo ya uongozi lakini na maadili so she will share tips and um, nuggets that will enable us to also succeed as um, value based entrepreneurs and businessmen and leaders of our communities ah uh, kwa hata tushirikisha vitu mbalimbali ambavyo vitatusaidia kufanikiwa kama mjasiria mali vitu vinavyohusiana na mambo ya maadili na biashara but we will also get to hear from our very own Tanzanian entrepreneur Daria Makarama uh, tutasikia pia kutoka kwa mmoja wa watoto wetu wa kitanzania Daria Makarama who has built her business from the bottom up she started like me like you where we have nothing but faith and have seen our business grow ambaye ameanzia ameanzisha biashara yake kutoka chini kabisa kama ambavyo wengi wetu tunaanza na ameweza kufanikiwa kupitia imani na kumuomba Mungu lakini kwa um, kwa kufanya kazi kwa bidii pia akaweza kufanikiwa sana Daria is the owner of a SME design factory that exports fabrics made in Tanzania to markets outside of Tanzania yeye anamiliki kiwanda kinachotengeneza nguo ama mavazi ambayo yanasafirishwa kutoka Tanzania kwenda nje ya Tanzania and leading the panel is our very own Dr. Charles Sokile na kiongozi ambaye ataenda kuongoza meza ni Dr. Charles Sokile who is the general secretary of Kingdom Leadership Network Tanzania ambaye yeye ni katibu mkuu wa Kingdom Leadership Network of Tanzania. But he's also a corporate and a marketplace leader who works for Diffid. Uh, ni, pia ni mtu anayefanya kazi katika serikali anafanya na Diffid na Mungu anaendelea kumwezesha hata huko kwenye ulimwengu wa, 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 wa kazi. And once the panel is finished, you will also have an opportunity to ask a few questions that are close to your heart things that you really want to know so please write them down kwa hiyo baada ya wale watakaokaa katika meza kutupa idea mbalimbali utapata nafasi ya kuuliza maswali na kupewa majibu kwa hiyo tunaomba kama una maswali basi uanze kuyaandika alafu tutafuata utaratibu ambao tutapewa so i'd like to first invite to the panel and to take her seat Dr. Obi Ezekwesili may we please put our hands together as Dr. Obi Ezekwesili comes to take her seat Dr. Obi Ezekwesili is the former vice president of the World Bank's Africa region she's a leading chartered accountant and she was also the co-founder of the Global Anti-Corruption Group and has played several key positions within the gov Nigerian government including senior special assistant to the president of Nigeria she's also an advisor to many nations presidents and leaders of many nations like Rwanda and Liberia Dr. Obieze Kwesili amekuwa ni makamu wa rais wa Benki ya Dunia Afrika. Amefanya kazi pamoja kishirikiana na viongozi mbalimbali mbali katika Afrika pamoja na kuchukua ama kushika nafasi mbalimbali mbali za kiuongozi katika serikali ya Nigeria, lakini amesimama pia kama mshauri kwa marais mbalimbali mbali kama wa Rwanda na Liberia, lakini pia amesimama mstari wa mbele katika Uh, kampeni ama katika harakati za kupambana na vitendo vya rushwa I'd like to now take this opportunity to welcome and invite Dr. Bill Winston to take his seat at the panel when we please put his our hands together Dr. Bill Winston will be introduced formally later but Dr. Bill Winston is a visionary leader a business mogul as you've heard from Dolores He's an author. He's a statesman who reaches more than 
100 million households in the United States. Dr. Bill Winston is the founder and pastor of Living Word Christian Center, and he also served for six years as a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force. He was born in Tuskegee, Alabama, where he was inspired and influenced for leadership by the abundance of educators, scientists, and physicians who surrounded him as a youth. Dr. Bill Winston ni kiongozi ambaye ana maono makubwa, lakini pia ni mfanyabiashara mkubwa, pia ni mwandishi, lakini amefanya kazi na viongozi mbalimbali wa serikali kama mshauri na kama mtumishi wa Mungu ambaye anaweza kutoa maelekezo ambayo yanaweza kaisaidia nchi. Amezaliwa uh, Tuskegee, Alabama huko aliweza kuwa kupata mafunzo kukua huko lakini pia ni rubani ambaye amerusha ndege za kivita kwa ni mtu ambaye kwa kweli Mungu amemuinua na amempa nafasi kubwa sana for many of us who've watched dr bill winston on youtube or on tbn we know him as the faith man ya kwa sisi ambao tumemwangalia sana katika youtube na katika tbn tunamjua kama mwalimu wa imani ama mtu wa imani and dr bill winston has launched a new book called faith and the marketplace na kwa sasa ameandika na kuthibitisha kitabu kipya kime kinaitwa imani na sokoni au imani sokoni and that book is available for sale outside na hicho kitabu kiko pale nje kwenye meza yetu ya mauzo ukienda ukiulizia utakipata kinauzwa kinauzwa shilingi 1500 na ukikipata basi kitakusaidia the book is available for sale for Tanzania shillings 50000 I'd like, like now like to take this opportunity to invite Daria Makarama na wakati huu napenda kuchukua nafasi hii kumkaribisha Daria Makarama Daria Makarama is an entrepreneur a Tanzanian entrepreneur whose business has grown from scratch and is now dealing with markets outside of Tanzania and she will tell us a lot more about it. Uh, Daria ni mfanyabiashara wa Kitanzania ambaye biashara yake ilianza chini kabisa lakini sasa imekuwa mpaka anaweza kupeleka uh, vitu vyake hadi nje ya nchi. And now I'd like to invite the moderator of our panel Dr. Charles Sokile. Na sasa ni mkaribishe atakayesimamia panel hii Dr. Charles Sokile. He's a management development and institutions expert. He's a management development and institutions expert. Uh, ni <laughs> Okay, it's okay. And he's a technical advisor and international consultant specializing in development management anazungumzia uongozi na mambo kama hayo <laughs> Dr. Sokile worked briefly as a lecturer at the Institute of Development Studies University of Dar es Salaam before moving to management programs Alitumia mambo ya maendeleo kabla hajafikia kwenye mambo ya kuratibu And he also sits on a number of boards Karibu sana Dr. Sokile Thank you uh, Carol and thank you ladies and gentlemen shall we put our hands together for carol thank you yes ladies and gentlemen uh, tonight we are indeed graced to have a uh, really honored guests uh, madam obi who we lobby to become a tanzanian and uh, dr bill winston our very own father who've been with us for the past uh, 30 hours and it's been really a blessing and uh, we also have uh, our daughter uh, Daria Makaramba who's really out there in the marketplace so our theme of discussion tonight is unlocking kingdom finances and, uh, together with us here um, we will be talking about uh, what are the real issues what are the challenges what are the practicalities of uh, Christians uh, excelling out there in the marketplace and is it possible to unlock uh, finances and how do we go about that 
So without much ado, I would like to go straight to uh, Dr. Bill Winston, and I would like to put a question on you, Doctor. You, we quoted you saying that you moved into uh, Chicago, Illinois, with only 200 shillings, and you didn't go $200, and you didn't go there to trade. You went there to, to, to preach, and, and normally preachers are not known for making money. How did you turn out that $200 uh, dollars into a multi-billion empire that you're running now in the global, uh, in the global, in the planet Earth? Um, I like to say there was some formula that I learned. Experience that I've had in growing. That really gives me a relationship. If it were mine, because I know that if you go to Chicago with only $200, you are in a lot of trouble. Uh, so what did I do? <clears throat> I followed the Holy Spirit. He said, go. I had no place to stay, and a dear sister opened her home to me and my family, and she said, stay here until you get started in Chicago. So I was with her. We were with her for about eight months. And then we moved out and got a very small apartment. And then we started our ministry. And then we kept growing in, in obedience. Um, when you're in the kingdom, um, God does not ask your opinion. He only asks you to obey. He does not have a backup plan because his first plan always works. So he asked me to do things, and as I followed him, uh, everything that I did worked out. He said, if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. He says in John chapter 14, verse 21, Jesus said, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, it's he that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. And so I counted on just obedience, because I watched the life of Abraham. And if you want to see how God's going to lead you, look at the life of Abraham. Because I've found that he leads each Christian a lot like he led Abraham. And so as a result of that, Abraham just obeyed. He left his family, he left his familia, and he followed God. And Abraham, in Genesis chapter 24, was an ape man who was one of the richest men in the world. So I'm saying that if you want to please God, it takes faith. And faith is acting on the word of God. So that's my story. Wow, that's powerful. Um, um, Pastor, just before you go, um, uh, I really wanted to know, um, when did you really started focusing on, on big money? Because you could as well have been very successful with a big congregation, but with no money. So uh, why did you really go into uh, the dollar business, the multi-billion uh, empire business? Now, when did I get into big money? Is Why you did you saying? go there? Why did you what? look for? Did. Yes. Okay. You're asking some pretty tough questions here. Um, <clears throat> God took me from business. I was with IBM. I was a regional marketing manager in the Midwest region uh, for IBM and computers. And God told me to go into full-time ministry. So I left it. And I left it not knowing where I was going like Abraham. But I was following him. 
And as I went and started being successful in what God had called me to do, he said that if you just be faithful over a few things, I'm going to make you ruler over many. And I believe that when our ministry got larger, I'd say around 6,000, maybe 7,000 members, God spoke to me and said, buy that shopping mall. Now, this shopping mall was bigger than anything that I could imagine that I could do. In fact, I had no shopping mall experience. But when God called you to do something, he anoints you to do it. And so that's the difference between the kingdom and the world. I just find in the Bible where God calls so many people to do things they'd never done before. And, you know, um, so he, we need to count on him. So once he said, by that chopping mall, I knew what was happening. God was putting me back into the business environment. And we bought the shopping mall and we hired maybe 400 to 500 new jobs of people and we affected the entire community. We have paid millions of dollars in taxes so that the uh, state and the country could continue to do the things that they wanted to do. And so we have been what I call a, an example of how the can come into the world and make a difference. And so that's what we wanted to do. Excellent. You are indeed a blessing in Chicago. And uh, that's really powerful how God used your background uh, from business into preaching and back to business again. And it's really wonderful. Madam Obi, we don't know of any business you're doing. Uh, your face in the continent is not that of selling or buying or trading. But you've really made a name out there in the career and in the professional, in the corporate world. What took you up there? Did I catch the last one to be what took me out there? Yes, what took you, what made you really go up the ladder? Ah, what took me up the ladder? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so um, as I said earlier this morning, I, I am a purpose-driven person. I was uh, raised by a father who always said to us that... Um, anything created that serves no purpose ought to die. As dramatic as it sounded, it gave us a sense that we needed to always be useful. So you couldn't be occupying space and just be rudderless. Anything comes, anything goes. That's not, that's not productive. And so with that kind of a background and a father who consistently said to us, See it thou a girl diligent in her work, she will stand before kings and not before mean men. I was hearing that almost every day of my life. And, and um, another value that my father shaped us with, together with my mom, of course, uh, was consistently saying to us that he had no landed property that he was going to bequeath to us. <laughs> he had a house, but I mean, it wasn't anything to, to, to write home about. So he said, don't hope on anything of a house, a mansion, or of a bank account that I would bequeath to you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you your education that you wish to attain. And then, I'm raising you with values. Then, number three, I'm going to give you my good name. If you make the mistake of messing up my name, even if I am dead, I will come out of the grave and knock your head for you. <laughs> so, and it was a credible threat. It was a credible threat. And so, I kept growing. So, my first, because you talked about the ladder. My first work was to train. After my first graduate studies, I trained with the accountancy firm Deloitte and Touche, which is a global firm, and became a chartered accountant. And that was the only time ever that I wrote, I wrote a letter 
to apply for a job. Subsequently, as I worked there, then I, I had gotten married a few months before, um, after that. And then I began to grow in my place of work. Then my husband and I gave our lives to Jesus under a pastor who had very strong sense of government. The idea of the church as a governing church. And so he raised us in the 90s in the knowledge of how powerful we are by virtue of the revelational power of God. The fact that we're no longer just nominal Christians sitting in a dead environment. But we're activated by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so that all the knowledge and the tools that we've been given get a sharper edge through that unleashing by the Spirit of God. And that appealed to me so much. And I understood that, hey, what my dad had been saying about purpose was actually in the Bible. We were Catholics as, as a child. I was Catholic. Anyone who is Catholic will tell you that the Bible is not a common thing. We have something called the prayer book, simple prayer book. And that's what you read. So you really weren't conversant with the Bible. But by giving my life to Jesus, I became conversant with the power of God. And that power of God made all the difference. I, in, the, in those early 90s, while I was now growing in the private sector, my pastor looked at me and said, Obi, your pulpit is not in the church. Your pulpit is in government. Your pulpit is in the nations. And many years after, as, as, as I kept being headhunted, it got to the point where I was headhunted to get into government. And I became an, uh, a special assistant to the president, a senior special assistant, executed the public procurement reforms in my country. The country decided to give me a name that follows me up until tomorrow. They call me Madam Due Process in Nigeria because, you know, we had to bring governance order into a corrupted public procurement system. I went on to become Minister of Minerals and then Minister of Education and then I went on to become the uh, Vice President at the World Bank in charge of the Africa Region Program. And in all of this, what I saw unfolding before me were all the prophetic declarations of both my father and my pastor. And one consistent thing that enabled me was that I kept with that voice of my father and refused to negotiate my values. And one thing that was incredible was my father saying to me, we may not be rich in money, but we're wealthy in values. Well, that's powerful. Um, uh, thank you. Um, interesting, the role of the fathers is coming out quite clearly, how they really inspired you. And uh, I was just wondering whether Daria, you are a lady, and whether you are the mom, and what did she play, if any, in what you're doing now? But before which, please, can you tell us what you're doing, and maybe what did your mom uh, help you to achieve? You may feel free to speak in any language. Um, uh, I'll speak in Swahili. I'm comfortable to speak in Swahili. Um, Naitwa Daria Makaramba. Nimezaliwa kwenye familia ambayo ni wabunifu, washonaji wote. Now, this is not a coincidence that I was born in such a family. Najua kabisa kwamba huu ulikuwa ni mpango wa Mungu. Haiwezi kuwa tu kwamba ni coincidence nimezaliwa kwenye familia hiyo na wote tunajua kushona. I know that was God's purpose to bring to bring me into that family and give me that talent. And not only me or even my sisters. That's be, a sewing be, talent, right? Yes, it's okay. a sewing talent. Uh, na tumejengewa hiyo kutoka kwa mama. Mama ni mchaga na kama mnavyojua wachaga. 
ikifika siku ya sikukuu pasaka christmas anakuja na kitambaa na kuambia this is your christmas dress she gives you a fabric that is not sewn she says this is a christmas dress and this is a, your easter dress so you have to get on the sewing machine and stitch that dress to perfection that was your mom yes that was my mom oh, wow interesting can you tell us how that took you how far did that experience take you and how does it link with what you're doing now um niliendelea nayo kiasi kwamba marafiki zangu walikuwa waki fika kupata uh, sherehe zao mbalimbali wananitafuta so every now and then my, would, my friends would look for me they would say i have a birthday or i have such and such a, a occasion and i need you to make a dress for me so i would get on the sewing machine and i started this at the age of 12 so i would do that get on the sewing machine cut the dress stitch it and and give it to the to the friend who needed it so i grew up like that i went on and off because of school when i was school was busy i couldn't do it and when there was time or holiday i would go back to stitching so it went on like that uh nikaendelea mpaka nikafika form 6 nikaenda mpaka chuo kikuu I did my degree and when I was I, I was doing my degree still my friends would come back to me and say if you don't stitch this dress for me I know my occasion is going to be ruined because they had that much trust in me but I did not take that talent as something that was given to me by God I took as if it was they were disturbing me i didn't uh, like take it seriously so i finished my school then i i finished my degree i went into em- employment i did uh, I, i was a flight employed as a flight attendant for five years and then after five years the airline collapsed so after that i had nothing to do <laughs> So that is when Jesus rescued me. I was saved. So uh, when I was uh, as 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 as, uh, as soon as I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I volunteered into a church for five years. I worked as um, an administrative manager for five years for a foundation that wanted to start a bank for the for, for 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 the ministry and i was in charge of uh collecting all the funds to start the bank so i worked uh in the in the church for five years and after that the lord said your assignment is over so i had to go back home i went into like a one month fasting asking him what next then he said to me i'm asking you as i asked abraham what do you have in your hands as i asked moses what do you have in your hands then i said to him i have a talent a sewing talent and he said to me use it and i will bless you wow yeah, that's really interesting and um, um, if i may indulge madam if you may uh, did you design this fabric yourself uh, your attire yes i did okay interesting. and can you tell us uh, uh, what do you where do you sell now and uh, how is the business faring out there and what are the challenges that you're meeting out there as you do your business i do have uh, most of my customers uh within tanzania though i have uh, a few from us uk and now a little bit in kenya and uganda so the lord is opening up the way for me in the ways that i've never imagined i've never imagined any challenges you're finding out what is the difficulties there um challenges uh mainly is just uh the tailors uh 
the, the problem with uh, 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 this business is the tailors. They keep moving from one company to the other. But uh, with God's grace, since I have the talent, I keep on training new ones. That's the way I, I, I go with my that, That's yeah. quite interesting. I thought the challenge was really market, capital, and all those rhetorics we hear about. And it's about basic tailing, tailing some skills. Um, can you expound more on that? If, if you depend on God, everything falls in place. Because he says, do not be anxious for anything. Whatever you need, you ask him. And he will open up the way. Quite interesting. Um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, this is a very interesting comparison uh, from the uh, faith to the marketplace to the entrepreneurship to the real world. And uh, the stories are coming out quite clearly. Uh, what fathers do to influence daughters and sons and what mothers do to pass on talents and depending on God, hearing from God, and quite interesting, really. And before we go to the next round, uh, we wanted to pick a few questions from the plenary. If you have a burning question, and uh, I'll give you two live session, uh, hands, and then if there's any recorded question somewhere, and could you please target to a specific speaker and be as brief as possible so that we redeem time. Any question? Yes, one there. Second. Uh, third. So we have three questions in a row, so could you please... Uh, Start from that side, shout it up, say your name, and then can you tell us to who are you directing your question? Um, yes, this question goes to Daria. My name is Joe Bishota. Um, Daria, I would be keen to understand how you got the funding to actually start your business. Yeah, can we check the round so that we could uh, uh, respond at a go? The second hand was at this side. Professor, please. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Joseph Kimeme, and my question is directed to uh, Dr. Winston. Uh, the topic is unlocking kingdom finances. In this case, it seems to me that it is we who have to do the unlocking. Uh, as I hear your story, it is God who sent you to Chicago. My question is, what is the role of man? Apart from obedience, do, do, do we have a way by which we can activate God into sending us like he did for you? <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, last question from Madam there. Doctor, please. Good evening. My name is Emelda Lutebinga. My question is directed to Dr. Obi. I'm very, very inspired with your CV and seeing what you have been able to do. We've seen you saving God in different areas, in the government, in the corporate world, at the World Bank level, and also a church in different ministries. So as a woman and a very young mother, my child is only 11 months, I am always inspired by women like you, but uh, what I would love to hear from you is where do you really get the balance to Uh, what you you have been who you are today because of what you got from your parents your father still speaks to you so I've learned something in terms of uh, what we really put into our children matters a lot in terms of what what they become when they become uh, grown-ups so that's my question to you thank you sure ladies indeed and ladies first so madam Obi please can you start over and respond to that um. I answer this question because uh, it's often thrown at me by especially her generation is to say that frameworks help me to organize myself and my thought. The framework that I have for every woman is that there are five realities that at least you are created to fulfill. 
your reality as a unique individual no order simply a unique person created by God as part of the human race and so in that reality God has deposited giftings talents and that is what means that that's what makes you become a daria who thinking she was supposed to be a an a, a, an air hostess missed the boat you were the one that sank that company by the way because God had to close it <laughs> in order to get you at, like Jonah <laughs> to go and do what you so your unique reality unique one your profession is determined by that reality then your second reality is your reality as a daughter. You're the product of two people, a father and a mother. It is through that reality that history is kept alive. So everything that's ancestral about your family, they just pass on many things to you. Last night when the uh, pastor was speaking, he talked about his father. That's a reality. The parents give birth to you, you become a daughter. I was just speaking of my father. My reality as a daughter is very important. And the foundation of where I came from. I must fulfill that reality. In fulfilling my reality as a daughter, I know that my parents are key and central to the life ahead of me. So I never stop being responsive to the needs of my history. My third reality third reality is my reality as a sick only children. They end up having two brothers, three sisters, and all of that. Do you know that my reality as a sibling was how I, I 